Hello, Wolfpack. Um, I think that the question on everyone's mind in the last few days in the market uh, would be that, is Bitcoin still on track, right? Is it still on track? We've had a lengthy correction. Uh, there's no doubt about that. We've been correcting ever since we reached our all-time high uh, on October the 20th. So about two weeks now, about a fortnight uh, worth of corrections. And I can I can sense the sentiment uh, in the market dying down a little bit. Yeah, old coins are doing okay, but Bitcoin's kind of lagging a bit and people are getting a bit skeptical here. They might think that, hey, maybe it's a double top, right? We did have the all-time high uh, back here in April at around 64K and now we've just reached up to 67K and now we've been correcting. Uh, we reached a bottom here, uh, let's go back to the four hourly chart, at around 50, 56K actually, that was a wick downwards, but we've reached a bottom here at 58K, which is actually a proper bottom, right? That was just a, a wick caused by liquidations. But I think that the market is in a very interesting position right now. And I wanna talk about uh, whether we're still going okay because my whole like premise of this bull market is basing everything that happens off of the cyclical theory because we have so much reason to believe that the cyclical theory is the most reliable um, kind of pathway that we need to be following in order to be successful in the crypto bull market. So let's see what happened um, in the last cycles, right? We can look at this and I've looked at this before, but I want to get a better example of the percentages and the dates in this video. So what we can see is that we have a pretty clear four-year cycle theory. For those of you who don't know what the four-year cycle theory is, it's basically a bull market every four years, right? So bull market, one, two, three, bull market, right? One, two, three, bull market. Sorry, the numbers are a bit stuffed up there, but that's essentially the premise of it. It's happened over and over again. And within those bull markets, um, if you zoomed up, you could notice that we have very clear trends, right? We have every September, for example, is red, right? Every single September is red. Um, for example, every single November and December and even October is green, heavily green, right? Q4 in a bull market, heavily green. So we have a pretty clear four-year cycle theory. And so what I want to be looking at in this video is whether we actually are staying in line with that, because that's what really matters on a larger scale, right? Um, a lot of people wouldn't have thought that, hey, when we came down in September, they wouldn't have thought we were holding 40K. I think the vast majority of the cryptocurrency space was saying we're going below 40K. Uh, but you know, as we, you know, on this channel, we looked at the bull market support band and we said that, hey, every September we've tested this and every September we've bounced off of it. And we kind of concluded that we were just going to hold that region. And we did, right? And there's been multiple occurrences like that that have made us look at the cyclical theory as something that's more important than the shorter term price action. So let's look at what happened in the last cycle, right? So this is 2017. Uh, and this is the, the bull market in 2017, we have the same period of time we're in now, right? Right now, uh, at the current date, it's the 4th of November in Australia, right? That means we're somewhere around here. All right, so what we can see in this 2017 cycle, yes, we don't have the same structure, that's, that's for sure. But what we do have is, like I said, a very similar, um, you know, we bottomed out here in Ju July, right? Like we did in this cycle. We had a red September period, right? Like we did in this cycle. We went upwards to new all-time highs in October, like we did in this cycle. And then we had a corrective period towards the end of October and into mid-November, like we are doing currently. So let's see what the dates actually are. Like, obviously we weren't, uh, you know, we're not following the exact same structure, but right now the corrective structure is the same. So what we did in 2017 is we reached our all-time high here and on October the 21st, and we kind of went up a little bit, but we finished our overall correction, right? We had the last bit of our overall correction on November the 12th. Currently in this bull market, we started correcting on October the 20th, all right? So that is one day uh, before what we did in 2017. And currently the date is November the 4th, right? We're still correcting and we will be expecting this correction to be ending, right? The last little leg of this correction to be ending according to the cyclical theory at November the 12th, right? So we still have technically, according to the cyclical theory, and this is only based off one cycle, um, we have eight days left of corrective moves until we can start breaching through to all-time highs, right? In 2017, let's go back to the chart here, try and find it. In 2017, uh, we actually reached all-time highs on November the 16th. So what we could say is that we will correct into November the 12th and then on November the 16th, we'll be reaching uh, prices above 67K. Remember that November, although a bullish month for Bitcoin and altcoins, the first half and even the middle of November has typically been a period in which we've been correcting historically. Like even in the 2013 cycle, and I mean, I could bring it up now, it's just gonna take a while to get to. Let's try and get to the 20. 
2013 cycle here, and we can see that, uh, you know, again, not the exact same thing played out, but something very similar. I think I've already actually outlined it here, so let's look at this. Well, we had a very similar structure, right? We moved upwards, broke all-time highs in October. We started correcting on October the 23rd, which is, um, you know, we had... October the 20th in 2017, October the 21st this year, and October the 23rd in 2013. And then we actually stopped correcting, correcting and started breaking all-time highs on November the 3rd. Okay, so very similar structure. Um, and, you know, we've had these corrections historically. So what we're seeing right now, and then this is the most important part of this video, is not uh, out of the ordinary, but you know, that's not to say we shouldn't be keeping an eye on it because it is threatening, right? It is it is pretty threatening. We can look at the four hourly chart here. I think we've got it up over here. Um, and we can see that, you know, it is threatening. You know, we pretty clearly um, are getting rejected over and over and over again. If we remove some of these indicators, I can show you a bit more clearly. Um, the most important thing I'm looking at in this chart in the short term is this region, this pink line here at around 63.7K. We can see we flipped that region, held it for support here. Resistance, resistance, and resistance once again. So it is a pretty important region to conquer. Once we once we conquer 63.7k, not only uh, do we you know have that extra support, we also have a pretty clear run up to new all time highs. Because I would say that you know this region here, which is our previous all time high 64.9k, is actually a very minimal resistance. Right, we conquered that very easily in just one four hourly candle. Um, so. You know, it wouldn't be too abnormal to say, or it wouldn't be too out of the ordinary to say that if we flip this region, we're pretty much guaranteed to go to new all-time highs once again, and that would be a nice cup formation once again. So November the 12th, you know, I think if we get to November 12th, if no, if we get to November the 12th, or maybe a few days after, and we start to see the hey, um, you know, we're still correcting downwards, it, we're still moving sideways, nothing's really happening, um, that's when we can start getting concerned. But as of right now, I, I really don't think the structure is too bad. Um, if we look at, for example, the four hourly MACD, we're only just now seeing a bearish MACD cross, which we need to reset the structure. Uh, the stochastic RSI is forming quite nicely, right? We're seeing a rounding bottom there. Uh, so we could be moving upwards quite shortly. As for the Bollinger Bing Bands, we've flipped the top part of the Bollinger Bands. We're testing it for support right now. We could be seeing a breach. Let's see what happens. Um, I think it's a little bit too early. Um, to start jumping to conclusions, especially when we have this much cyclical theory behind us, right? I, I'd say that, you know, um, it is very, very, very unlikely that we, we actually enter a bear market here. Yes, we could correct further. I think that's definitely a possibility. Um, but I would like to say as well that 60K, which is our support zone here, and I'll, I'll make it a bit more bold so you can see it, which is this thick blue line, that's 60K. Look how strongly this support zone is held over and over and again. You know, eventually, just like what happened at 40k, um, there's going to be not enough sellers for us to be retesting that again, and we're just going to be able to go upwards, right? That's exactly what happened at 40k. We did this structure, right? Yes, we came down into it, but we ultimately just tested 40k over and over and over again until it became so clear that we're not breaking through down to the bottom of 40k that we just have to go upwards, right? There's nowhere else for the price to go. Um, I will say that on the one day chart, and this is an interesting chart that I wanted to bring up, uh, we do have some interesting structures. We have a, uh, a narrowing um, Bollinger Band, right? And what that means is that, well, the price is, is ranging in a very short um, kind of span here. And when the Bollinger Band is narrows, it essentially means a move is on the way, right? An explosion is on the way. It's compression before the explosion. Um, if you will notice that uh, around here in October, right, October 2020, we had an intense narrowing on the Bollinger Bands, um, and then we were kind of led into a bit of a rally upwards. We could be seeing something similar to that on a much smaller scale. Um, I don't think we'll be moving upwards on the same scale as we did from 10K to 64K, but the point of the matter is, is that every time we narrow on the Bollinger Bands, it generally means a move is on the way, right? We have a potential bullish MACD cross to support us if that move does come to the upside. And we have the stochastic RSI bottoming out quite nicely here as well. So, you know, I think that, you know, in, in conclusion of this video, yes, the, the shorter term technical analysis is, is mixed, right? Mixed at best. All right. If anything, it's a little bit bearish because we're constantly just getting rejected down. But at the end of the day, um, it is worth noting that, hey, we're clamping quite heavily between 63.7K and 60K. If one of those breaks, we can be a little bit more clear what's going on. I really don't think uh, that if we see a drop below 60K, it will sustain for very long. Um, and I'm looking at 60K and 57K as the critical support zones for this move. Now, Again, if we don't move to the upside uh, by or around November the 12th, 
uh, we can look at this again and we can start to make some predictions as to what actually is going on here and it might be a little bit deeper than the cyclical theory at that point but as of right now uh, everything is happening as it should be happening according to the last two cycles and honestly there's nothing to worry about at the current moment in time uh, let's see if we can break 63.7k that would be great to see um, ultimately this is just a healthy correction uh, if you look at well, as of current it is right if you look at for example where our SMAs are, right, on the daily chart. Actually, let's go to the weekly chart to give us a better example of what's actually happening here. Uh, we can see that we're very, very far above um, all of our fundamental, and these are short-term SMAs, right? You think about if we brought up the 50 and 200 day, they'd be down here in the 40K region. This is the short-term SMA. This is a 12-week SMA, which is a very short-term SMA. Even that is over 10,000 USD below current prices. So I think we're kind of suffering the consequences of moving up way too fast right now. I mean, you can't blame Bitcoin we moved up from 39K to around 67K in about three weeks. Um, and we need to kind of reset all of these indicators, uh, bring everything up to speed so we can come back in in the next week or so uh, with some more bullish crosses and get this back on the, ro back on the road again, essentially. So as of right now, uh, it's a healthy correction. Let's keep an eye on it. You know, I'm not going to say, uh, you know, it's the best looking chart because it's not. It's not the best looking chart, right? Uh, but I'm also not willing to sell anything at these current prices. Um, I'm still bullish, uh, keeping an eye on what's happening here. Right now, everything is fine. Um, let's see what happens. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.